Hey, 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 welcome to our groundbreaking 12-week live podcast series that delves deep into the heart of the hairdressing world, promising to change the way you view you and your salon experience forever. Hosted by the dynamic duo of myself and Mariana, two seasoned hairstylists with a passion for innovation and authenticity. This podcast is your guide to unlocking the power of change from the inside out. With live, candid, live discussions, expert insights, and a touch of humor, myself and Mariana create a safe and inspiring space for listeners to embrace change, boost their self-esteem, and unlock their true potential. Are you ready to step into a world where hairdressing is more than just a service, but a path to personal growth and empowerment? Join me and Mariana on this new series and be part of the movement that's changing the hair industry from the inside out. Your journey to renewed confidence and self-discovery starts here. Today's episode, episode three, the energetic body. Imagine your body as a vibrant tapestry of energy, a pulsating reservoir of life force that courses through your veins, illuminating every cell and fiber of your being. This is your energetic body, a dynamic and invisible force field that bridges the gap between the physical and the metaphysical and the electricity that fuels your thoughts, the vitality that propels your actions, and the essence that connects you to the universe. Within this energetic web lies the potential for healing, transformation, and boundless potential. It's the heart of your intuition, the source of your creativity, and a conduit for manifesting your deepest desires. When you tap into the power of your energetic body, you unlock the realm of limitless possibilities, a wellspring of vitality that propels you forward on the exhilarating journey of the discovery and self-mastery. Embrace it, harness it, and let it infuse every aspect of your life with renewed vigor and purpose. Are you excited about this series? So where is everybody from? So let us know. Uh, Put it in the comments. And if you want to put your name beside your comments, then we can certainly pull you up and uh, share that because we like to call you up and celebrate with you, put any questions or comments. And like I said, Mary Anna and I are live. So this is number four, which is going to be exciting today. It's about the energetic body and there's so much, so much to cover. So I'm going to bring in uh, our other host here. So Mary Anna, she's with us here live as well. And so if, if you're kind of thinking, what do you so everybody listening, what do you think when you hear the word energetic, like energetic body? Does that mean to you that it's you've got lots of vim and vigor and you're energetic? Or does it mean like it's an energy field? Does it mean it's, you know, is it a heart field? Is it a, a space field? Is it, you know, that sort of thing? We'd love to hear. So I'll let Mariana take it over. So our big topic today, an exciting topic today, the energetic body. And we we're already chatting before, and there's lots of energy that's going to be happening, lots of life happening during this show. So make sure that you do jump in. You make sure that you comment. We love to hear from you. Um, yeah, so let's let's roll. So we'll introduce Mariana. Actually, so for the ones that haven't been following Mariana, if you can kind of introduce yourself, what you're all about, and then we'll jump right into the energetic body. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, Brad. It's morning for me here in Australia. It's yeah. nine, just after 9 a.m. Um, yeah, I um, I have been hairdressing. I've been in the industry for 38 years, but I feel like I've been in the industry my whole life, even before mm. conception, because I'm a, I'm, I'm a, a third generation hairdresser. So I've come, I was born into the industry. This is how I've always seen it. So I've known nothing else but, mm. and surrounded by beauty and surrounded by hair and, and surrounded by working with people. So this is not just, this is just not a job. It's never been a job. It's never just been something that I have, um, oh, I think I'm going to do hairdressing. No, it's mm-hmm. just like I've always known that I was going to do this work because 
beyond the hair, it was always because I loved serving people and I loved mm -hmm. connecting with people. So my whole career has been about the relationships that I've built with people, which led me to realising that everything that we do in our industry has never actually taught us mm -hmm. to build conscientious professional relationships with our clients and with our staff, with our team. And I had a cathartic moment um, in my career when I was owning, when I owned my salon in Melbourne, um, where I had a client that had a nervous breakdown in my chair and I realised that I didn't have the skills and the tools to support this person out mm. of the situation that she was in. So I sold my business and got out of commercial hairdressing. That's what happened. That was that was my mm -hmm. catalyst moment. And back then it was really surprising because I never thought I would do that. And actually my father, who is an amazing hairdresser um, and retired now and who was working with me at the time in my salon, um, was super surprised that I was selling the business. <laughs> And he said, why are you doing this? And I said, because I just, th I can't do this anymore. I, mm -hmm. I, this is, I don't want to wake up to this anymore. This is, this is not enough for me anymore. I want more than this. And I became a therapist. I actually went off, became a therapist. This is just a little bit of a background. Mm -hmm. So I spent seven years studying therapy, all sorts of therapy, transpersonal art therapy, hypnotherapy, breath work, PT work, and just wanted to, con I consumed myself with the human experience because I wanted to understand what it was to actually guide people mm. and work with people on a deeper level because beautifying them on the outside had actually just met its run with me. I was done with that. It was not enough for me. So any anybody that's listening to this right now and is feeling this urgency, you know, this fracture, in their being where they're showing up to work to do something that's not actually resonating. And this is actually leading into the energy body today, right? This is really a really important piece that's not, that's, that's not resonating with who they are and what they stand for and how they want to spend their 8, 10, 12, 14 hours a day because it's a lot. That's a lot mm -hmm. of hours a week that you're in this energy. So... I actually took it upon myself and I went, something needs to change in the industry. Something, we need to bring something in. We need to bring a blueprint in that actually deepens the way that we're working, that actually really emphasizes on the relational aspect that really is going on, the 98% that's really going on between mm -hmm. the hairdresser and the client. Because Without those skills, without that knowledge and those tools, there is no deepening outside of the blow wave and the balayage. There's just, mm -hmm. there, there, there's no substance. There's no substance. And maybe when you're in your 20s, it's fun and it's great and it's a party and it's woohoo, let's go. And, mm -hmm. and I remember that feeling like that. It was an, an amazing environment to be in, you know, when, in your 20s. But in your 30s and in your 40s, maybe more so in your 40s and then in your 50s, there is a deepening and a, a natural, you know, um, uh, the, the, a rite of passage that occurs, a natural rite of passage, something else we look at in Evolve, the program, but a natural rite of passage that occurs within the self of going, is there more than this? Is, mm -hmm. there, is there anything else here? So I've spent 10 years. This is just a very quick summary and synopsis, synopsis yeah. my 38 plus years of doing this work mm -hmm. um i spent the last 10 years actually writing writing evolve and uh finally published it last year uh so it's 10 years in making this program this this even though it feels like it's emerged from out of nowhere overnight it's taken 10 years to map to blueprint, to create really original, organic exercises that are relevant and relate only to hairdressers and people in the mm -hmm. industry because of what we specifically do. So it's a journey. 
that I've created. And we were talking earlier about the fact that the journey, the journey of this quick fix world that we're in of like, I want instant, I want instant answers. Mm -hmm. I want relief. I want to be instantly holistic. It's, it's, it doesn't work that way, you know, and we're talking about the slowness of actually coming in to recognizing that we need to change and transform our neuro pathways in order to shift out of a consumer focused commercial focused mm -hmm. stereo focused industry to an internal focused holistic focused internal landscape industry where we're actually using the inner language and the inner world of the client to reflect their outer world. And mm -hmm. this, the shift is what's going on inside to reflect the outside. And this brings us to our topic today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all about, all about energy, energetic. I'd love to, so anybody watching, what's your idea? So when you, as I say, like here, the title, like the energetic body, what do you think of? So what does energy mean to you? Does it mean something out there? Does it mean something in here? Does it mean energy? Like I just had a coffee, so I got so much energy, <laughs> you know, does, is that what it means for you? But I love for you guys to say hi and just kind of chime in and make this very interactive for us because we love when you do. And we'll as I say, I'll always call you up and give you a shout out uh, because we love uh, to celebrate and appreciate you. And, and listen to what you have to say. <laughs> yeah. So, Please. yeah. So, so, yeah, so, 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 yeah. So, Mariana, where do you think we begin with the energy body? So, we've already been through three other bodies already emotional, sensory, and physical. So, now is so, so does the energetic body now encompass all of those three that we just already covered? Yeah, is it the next was logical step? Now, well, I was actually going to start with that and I was going to, mm -hmm. I was going to like rehash the reason why we've moved from the physical to the sensory to the emotional mm -hmm. is that these are the three layers that need to be separated, that accumulate the communication centers that go on internally mm -hmm. and then energetically the, the last body. So this is the last, this is the last module in initiation Yes. Um, in the Evolve program, and the last body is the energetic. And the reason why it's that is because all of those three bodies are reflected into the outer world. So mm. your energy is like it, 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 it extends minimally, it extends four to five inches outside of your body. So mm -hmm. anybody in that peripheral, which is so relevant, which is why I've actually got this in the Evolve program, anybody in that vicinity your clients, hearsay hairdressers mm -hmm. and beauty therapists, because they are much closer than four to five inches from you, you're touching them. Mm -hmm. So anybody in that sphere is actually affected by what's going on energetically with you and what you're projecting, what you're actually emanating. This is all affected by the people that you're working very closely with. So it's an extremely important subject, an extremely important awareness, because if you're out of congruency on your internal where you're wearing a mask or you're putting on a persona for the day and there's all this other dialogue, there's all these other stories, there's all this, there's another personality, let's just say, internally, and you're mm -hmm. hiding it with this mask of going, I'm just going to show up today and be the hairdresser, as a lot of hairdressers do. They sort of walk in the salon, they put on their hairdresser's outfit, and they begin the day, you know. And then when mm -hmm. they're leaving the salon, they take off their hairdresser's outfit and they leave it on the floor and they walk yes. out mm -hmm. a different person. And this is the split of energy. This is a really big split and one of the biggest causes of burnout for people in this industry, biggest, because the the amount of energy it takes to put on a persona and take off a persona every day. Mm -hmm. And you're doing this again, eight, 10, 12, 14 hours a day where you're being somebody that you're not really. 
Mm-hmm. And then you turn, come at the end of the week and you go, hey, I'm burnt out, I'm exhausted. And then multiply that by decades for people <laughs> like ourselves that have been in this industry for a long time. You get to the point where you just go, I can't, I can't, I can't wear all these outfits all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm exhausted. <laughs> exactly. And and being so that's the thing, because a lot of people, yes, you want to give your client the ultimate authentic experience. But that means maybe if you're energy energetically lower, then, you know, I mean, I think you still work with that. But to be up all the time and to be happy all the time, nobody's ever up and happy 24 seven. We all have stuff. We all have things we deal with. And like they say, you know, your energy is contagious. Right. So basically, if you're up and happy, most times people will be up and happy around you or or you, everybody's up. You want this person walks into the room with very low vibration. They bring everybody down mm-hmm. and they were all having a good time. But now they're, they've just changed. So what happened is the energy shifted in the room just by one person coming in. Right. So I guess it's how you kind of are you going to bring other people up? Or are they going to bring you down? Or are you going to find some equilibrium um, with each other and that sort of thing? Because that's the biggest thing I find with, with, with doing a service is to have yourself energetically there. I'd say authentically there, but energetically there, that you're not drained by the end of the day. That you're still providing 110% you know, service. That you're still in every moment. That you're still... A part of that. It seems like a lot of things to remember, but I think as long as you're in the moment and you're mindful, you don't really have to remember anything because you're you're there all the time, a hundred percent. You're right with them during the whole journey, the whole ritual, the whole service. You're you're right there all the time. But as I say, you have to, I think, energetically prepare yourself, or or as I say, like look what boundaries you may need to put in place, things like that to as a protection, like Mariana said, there are masks or veils or things that people wear that, you know, you do for whatever reason. It may be protection. It may be, I had something going on today, but I don't really want to share with people. I'll just put my happy face on and let's just go through. But energetically, you always have that thing around people. You always know when something isn't authentic, something isn't quite right, or they're the best person and most like, um, like when they speak, they just speak through truth. When you feel them, you just feel happiness. You know, there's, you can tell that from, and people say it's gut instinct. Some people it's ESP, some people it's whatever, but energetically, I think we're all attuned to each other on some level. And you can always tell just through talking, you can probably feel our energy just from watching, you know, us on a, on a, you know, an online platform, but you kind of get a feeling. You may not know us personally, but you kind of get a feeling about us. And I think that's more, and we talked about the the sensory and the feeling and the, the physical and all that stuff. But energetic, I think, is is so much, so much more. So as you're, you're watching, I'd love to hear your comments. Say hi. Uh, just be engaged with us. Let us feel your energy. <laughs> up here because they say the more energy you give us obviously we still love that feeling as well so I'll let mariana kind of take over and and let's dive in a little bit deeper into the energetic body um i'm just there's so much to talk about with the energy body and mm-hmm. it's it's just it's more it's like the simplification of it in terms of bringing it into a salon floor Mm-hmm. So I, I want to actually take it to the salon now. Like, let, let's just start there. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're actually, like you were just saying before, you know, when you come in, somebody comes in with a low vibe mm-hmm. and they actually bring the whole energy down. That happens because resonance and tuning in hasn't happened at the beginning of the day. So this is a really amazing tip for managers, salon owners that really want to make sure that there is a connection between their team, themselves, so that that resonance is actually created right from the beginning. This is a very important, you know, um, exercise to have. It takes literally, depending on how big your team is in the morning, it takes five to 15 minutes if you've got 
I don't know how many, you know, between five to 15 staff. But if mm -hmm. you actually put everybody together in a circle in the morning when they start and just ask everybody a simple question, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? Where are you at? And let everybody have a one-minute share of where they're at so that everybody in the salon knows their team, their, 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 their team members, where everybody's at, and they can support that throughout the day. Now, when that actually, that just that one simple thing, when that happens and every team member knows that they're supported by each other, mm -hmm. the, the stress of them needing to put on the mask all day actually is alleviated because if somebody's actually feeling sad because something's happened at home or something's going on emotionally for them, then a staff member that has a little bit more time might be able to bring them a cup of tea or a glass mm -hmm. of water or actually just have a check-in during the day and going, are you okay? Do you need some support? Do you need some help? Like this is energy check-in. Like you can feel mm -hmm. the other one. So the first thing that I suggest is connect your energy together. Become a unit. Mm -hmm. Become a solid unit in the salon. And it doesn't mean that you don't have your own boundaries and you don't have your own authenticity and your own uniqueness. It means that your salon team is connected. They're mm -hmm. alive and they're aware. And this starts permeating conscientiousness into the, into the salon space because it's energy is an unforeseen field, but it's a felt field. Mm -hmm. It's a deeply felt field. So how do you create energy in the in the space? Like you've got aesthetics and you've got oils and you've got diffusers mm -hmm. and you've got all of these beautiful crystals and all these beautiful plants and all these beautiful things, mm -hmm. but how do you create the unforeseen element of energy? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think I think too, one thing you talked about before on a previous episode is doing that check-in. So check in on yourself. So when you're checking in and checking out yourself in the mirror, you can also do, I think, an energy check. Like, yeah. where am I on the scale of one to 10 or zero to 100? Where am I at? Okay, I'm at a 75 today. And the person beside you said, I'm feeling amazing. I'm 100. And somebody's like, you know, it's uh, I'm a little rough. I'm about a 40% today. So, yeah. okay, we know, now we know how to connect, where to connect, what we need to do to bring that 40% energetic person, you know, up. So they're feeling more, you know, and as part of the team. And like you say, if they need assistance by getting a client shampooed or if they need whatever they need or getting the, bringing them a tea or just some time to relax or if they need to, you know, some way to just kind of get rid of the, the lower negativity and kind of raise that vibration up. Absolutely. But what, what also happens from this, from this check-in, from this connection, from this morphic field that every single, every single team member is actually a part of now. Mm -hmm. Firstly, there's this connection. Yes. You know, they've connected to themselves at home and yeah, thank you for, bringing that up. I actually brought that up in the last three sessions. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's important that you check in with yourself and know where you're at when you're coming into the salon in the morning so that you can share that with everybody authentically. And mm -hmm. then what happens when you share that authentically and everybody has shared their authenticity with one another, compassion and empathy actually start entering the field, mm -hmm. the energetic field. That field of compassion, care, and empathy is then felt by your clients. Mm -hmm. And they then feel cared for, empathized with, and there is compassion in the space where they can feel safe. They can mm -hmm. unpack. So we're talking about the unforeseen energy that goes on when these experiences and these exchanges go on between people. And what is felt? What's the repercussion of that exchange with people and how that starts building and creating a holistic space? Mm -hmm. That's the holistic space we're talking about. It's not just about having the aesthetics, the outside. It's the inside now. Now we're really getting into the inside. It's the inside that brightens 
that aesthetic. It mm-hmm. actually makes, it magnifies this aesthetic. You know, it, 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 it resonates. There's a resonance between what the clients are looking at in terms of aesthetic beauty, balance, harmony. They're feeling it now. They're really engaged in the energy of that aesthetic. And that comes mm-hmm. from how re- relating the relationships, the communication is mm-hmm. going on between each other. Exactly. And, and a lot of times it's not really the words. People can tell. You can say all the words you want, but I think people energetically still feel what they feel, regardless of what a person's saying. They, they just know. And people know when, when stuff is just being made up. People know when you're being true and authentic with them. People know that, like, and, and that's the biggest thing because in the salon, we're always taught, I mean, one thing that we should be doing is retailing for the benefit of the client um, and not just as a money thing. But uh, so if you believe you have a product that would really serve the client well, that would be great for them, mm-hmm. then they can tell that when you're saying, hey, because of this, you know, with your your hair, that sort of thing, I have something amazing for you. But if you just said, hey, I have something amazing, buy it, when you couldn't care less if it does anything, you're more money driven. I think the client feels that. And then they kind of feel a little bit off when you're not really in touch because the, the intention wasn't set properly. The, you know, cause your intention there is like, I'm going to make more commission or we're having a sale this month and we're going to sell as many X, Y, Z bottles as we can. The client can feel like that. You know what I mean? They love to buy. They don't love to be sold to. But energetically, they really feel that if you love them in your chair, they can feel that. If you're just, if they're just another number, they feel that. Um, Because energy too, like we said, it's one of those invisible things. Uh, You can feel its presence, but you can't always see it. I I think you can see it in a way that um, like, like the same, oh, the energy room, you can cut it with a knife. So is that a feeling or is that a vision or is it something that's just, you know, there, you know, obviously, you know, if you took a real knife and tried to, but, but taking a knife, this just, you know, is, is cord cutting, right? So basically sometimes you need to do some cord cutting Mm -hmm. to whatever you're energetically connected to, Mm -hmm. to maybe change, um, you know, where you're, where you're kind of at and where you need to be, to be through a truly authentic um, in the service with the client. Mm. It's um. I, I want to go back to I want to go back to the difference between you know setting an intention that's true mm-hmm. from your soul, and I really want to bring this in. Like if you've checked in with yourself, and then you've checked in with your team, mm-hmm. in that circle you know, even with yourself in the morning, that intention, like what, okay, based on how I'm feeling and and where I'm at today, what intention am I going to set with myself today? That's the first energetic step. Second energetic step is sharing that with your team Hmm. in the salon. When those intentions are said, when they're voiced and you have witnesses, what happens is, is that you're going to be held accountable by your team for what you've shared. And even though it was just a word and a lot of people just say, oh, it's just a word. It was just a word. It's not just Mm -hmm. a word. It's not just a word. It is an energetic projection. If you've tuned into yourself, it's come from your soul. It's come from the deepest part of yourself and it's an energetic projection of your truth. Mm-hmm. Now, when you actually, when you're talking about, you know, don't be sold to, but actually share with your clients and the clients feel the difference, mm-hmm. that is the energy of manipulation. Yes. And no one likes to be manipulated ever at all. So this, I, this old paradigm, this old way of thinking of sell, 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 target, target, mm-hmm. target, sell, 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 target, target, target. Right now, with the amount of with the amount of resources and knowledge that a client has in their hand, mm-hmm. and how educated, and also let's not forget how easy it is for them to order and buy online. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay, yeah. 
let's 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 just be realistic here because they can look at the product and go, I'll just get this online. And even mm-hmm. the professional products, you can't do that because mm-hmm. they need to be purchased through a stockist. Yes. And and mm-hmm. that is the case. But if you're one of those clients, it's like you've got a you've got you've got a, a um a um a stock target and you've got a hair target. And your only focus, your intentional focus is meeting those targets at the end of the week. The only Mm -hmm. energetic resonance that your clients are going to get is the push. Yes. Push. They're not going to get the care. They're going to get the push energetically. And you're going to get, if you're, so if you're losing clients, you're getting a lot of clients going, no, I'm okay. I'm fine. And you're getting a lot of pushback from the clients. Take a look Mm -hmm. at yourself. Why is this happening with your clients? Mm-hmm. And I put, I totally guarantee it be coming from the fact that you're in a push mentality energetically and you're not in a care mentality mm-hmm. and compassion mentality for the client in terms of what you want to actually, how, sorry, how you want to serve your clients at the highest level. Can you see how that builds up? Like, it, it's it's one step, two step, three step. It's like it's a build up to the outcome. The outcome doesn't happen if the internal mm-hmm. intentions are not set in accordance and in congruence and in authenticity to what's really going on energetically with yourself. Mm-hmm. Especially and and with with a client there. I mean that's our main focus. That's our main interest is to be for them there physically emotionally energetically you know also listening but that's that's all part of it too but if your intent is let's get as many people through quickly as we can let's sell as much product as we can let's do that energetically and also too i mean words have power energetically and what you also speak over others or or over yourself because i think people are kind of guilty of that too this client always comes late, blah, 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 blah. Like all that stuff energetically, you're putting it out there. So when you receive it, you're not so surprised or you're like, that justifies, I told you, they're always late. And of course your client, I was in traffic, this happened. And then, but energetically, maybe it wasn't them, but those words were spoken over them. So now your, your, whatever you're, whatever you've spoken is now coming into fruition. So with that as well, you have to make sure that you're really careful with your words. You're really careful when you speak with your client, communicate and relate with your client that you're not just saying a bunch of words to fill some space. You know what I mean? About any old thing. Uh, I'm not big on small talk with my clients. Never have been because I love to get real and I love to be there for them and as a professional suggest what they need. So I keep my conversation. So my intent is to keep my conversation professional and to keep the intent to do what's best in delivering the tools that I have, products, uh, services, whatever it might be that I can offer them. So it keeps that. Like you said, there's all those steps and you can't really miss the middle steps and expect the same outcome, right? So it, wor- it works that way. So if I know they're having issues with this, I need to step up and say, okay, we'll do a program. So this is what we're going to do. Here's our next steps. And then we'll take you on this journey and get you where you need to be rather than, you know, go ask the receptionist at the front. She'll recommend something for you for your hair issues. That's not, I think, us as professionals, the way we should be. We should be there, you know, we should be there, we should care, <laughs> you know, and then not say the other word is stare. So stare off into space and they're talking and you're like, <laughs> you're thinking about your grocery list, you're thinking about going out tonight or you've been out last night. Mm-hmm. You don't want to stare off into space because energetically you're not really there and they can tell. And then the client eventually will just be quiet, not say anything, and then you won't see them again. So and. It, and so energetically, I think you're kind of pushing them away by having a hard sell, um, hard sell uh, attitude and you're just pushing product or you're just kind of suggesting services they may or may not need. Um, but as I say, be really in there energetically because I think it really makes a big difference 
because energy is one of those things I think we don't really think about. Energy is, is kind of around us, yeah. but how often you think about what you think about? Most people don't because we get hundreds of thousands of thoughts in our brain every day. What do you do with those thoughts? Do you observe them? Do you capture them? Do you just let them go? Do you just, does it hit your mouth before it hits your brain and it just comes out? <laughs> like like things like that but energetically i think we we do like with all the other bodies we have a certain responsibility and i think we're responsible energetically for ourselves for others and how we speak over ourselves and others and situations so what do you have to say mariana because i've been just kind of just interjecting all kinds of things in no, there. it's great you give me plenty <laughs> to talk about <laughs> um, to actually like have this conversation with mm -hmm. you and everybody that's listening um and I, I and bringing it back to why it's important to actually understand your energy mm -hmm. you know and again the taking responsibility as a professional in understanding it's not just being a professional with how great your haircuts and your balayages are it's about how professional you are as a relationship specialist because that is what you're doing 98% of the time. 98% of your service is relating with your clients. Mm -hmm. So if you don't understand or you're not actually in alignment with your authentic truth, with understanding how you're feeling, what's actually moving you, what, what, what is actually, what is your energy field for the day? Like is it high? Is it low? Is it medium? What is your energy field? What are you bringing to the table and how you can meet that? Like this is, this is, these are the pieces. These are the pieces mm -hmm. of becoming a professional, actually stepping into this professional relationship person and why that's important now. Now I want to just step into, so now as a hairdresser, you understand your energy and the importance of it. When you do that, the beautiful thing, the delicious thing about this is that once you're intact, you get to actually read your client's energy. And mm -hmm. this is where the juice actually really is. This is where when you have got all yourself intact and you're super aware of the being, the place, the emotions, your body, all of that, and you've got it all together, then when a client approaches you, you're in a clear space to read them just like that, you know. And this takes 60% of the guesswork out of what you spend an entire session trying to work out, of mm -hmm. asking all of these exhausting questions. You can actually cut back when we get to communication and I think in probably in another two this another two podcasts away, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about communication and the importance of body language and and reading nonverbal cues and how that actually affects the way that we relate with our clients. This is the first step. This is the first step. Reading a client's energy, being able to see what state they're in. Are mm -hmm. they happy? Are they sad? Are they in a rush? Are they frustrated? Like mm -hmm. going back to the emotional body and understanding what those emotions feel in our body at this point now and then going, oh, I recognize that that client's feeling mm -hmm. a little frustrated or rushed or maybe a bit low today. And when we get into, when we actually get into in a states in a couple of like three podcasts away, mm -hmm understand how to actually will ra be raising and looking at the arousal states of a client and how to actually tune and harmonize that but in coming into energy with that reading another person's energy reading your client's energy immediately puts you in a professional stand of going i see exactly what's coming towards me i know exactly how to relate with this mm -hmm. i know exactly how to meet this person and if you can't meet this person, then you in, you're in a position of actually communicating that and going, okay, we're going to be, there's, there's a little mismatch with our energy here today. Mm -hmm. there, and this actually, 
a lot of hairdressers in in the in the paradigm actually go, oh, I can't I can't tell a client that we're not energetically aligned. Mm -hmm. that you know what you're missing, you're missing the magical adventure of going on a journey that's real with your client. Mm -hmm. You're actually opening up a doorway for your clients and giving them permission to be transparent with you. And that gives you permission to actually reflect them authentically because they're showing you a side of themselves because you're showing them a side of yourself that's real. Mm -hmm. that's real. It's not masked. It's not fake. It's authentic. It's, it's transparent. And when we start exercising in energetic transparency, this mm -hmm. is the next layer. Yes. You, you step into a world that is beyond your imagination. Mm. It's not harboured. It doesn't mean that you don't have boundaries. It doesn't mean that you actually overstep your boundaries. If anything, your boundaries are very tight and very clear. But it means that you, knowing um, your boundaries, mm -hmm. you are able to step into the energy with more free flow between you and another person mm -hmm. communicate that so yeah the next layer out of you being energetically aware is like you becoming energetically aware of your clients and mm -hmm. being able to read energy which we look into and evolve we actually do a whole lot of exercises about how to read energy how to actually see energy i love that that piece in evolve is my favorite it's like how mm -hmm. to see energy where does energy come from you know, where does energy come from? How to recognize which energy is online and which energy is not mm -hmm. and where they come from. You know, like there's just the energetic module in Evolve is thick and full and huge mm -hmm. and amazing because energy is just such, such a director of it's the last internal language, projected mm -hmm. language that comes out from the person to another person and this mm -hmm. is where it happens yeah and i love that part like you said with the connection and i think most clients would appreciate if you said um you know are you down today or things like that just because they would say hey this person stopped they weren't just like let's go through bulldoze with the service let's actually have a connection deep in our relationship i care about you i want to listen to you and maybe then they can alleviate some of what's on them, you know, or if they're feeling great, then that too, you can say, wow, you're really high energy today, <laughs> you know, and some people are, but sometimes too, then you're connecting with the real authentic energy that's there because high energy also too can be a veil or a mask where you're just, I'm this and that, but inside you're totally different. But I think that's what clients want. They want something that they can't get anywhere else. And if you're willing to be authentic in yourself, connect with them by saying, hey, energetically, this is what I'm feeling, then that may take you deeper with that client. And now they want to continue the journey with you because you took those few moments to say, I feel you right now. And, you know, and, and, or I, I, I'm sensing low energy. Would you like a silent appointment? It's not a problem for me. And they're like, yeah, that'd be great. No words are spoken. They, mm -hmm. they leave and they're happy and they tell all their friends and saying, this stylist really understood me. We didn't yeah. talk, but they really understood me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They get me. You they get me. You. And it's the experience. Like yeah. they're actually the clients walking out, having had an experience that they don't forget. Mm -hmm. they, they're going to forget the haircut until they yep. look at it again in the mirror and, mm -hmm. and they go, oh, yeah, this is great. This is awesome. It's working, right, because it's aligned with, with you connecting energetically to your client mm -hmm. and, and realising what it is that they need, where it is that they're at and how it is to serve them. This is a really big part of how to serve your clients at, mm -hmm. um, at a deeper level. It's so important. Another little piece that I wanted to bring in is we touch our clients we are the only industry that touches our clients. Now, the energetic transference that goes on between you and a client. Now, this is a really big piece, guys. Mm -hmm. Massive piece here. 
If you're not energetically aware of what's going on for you, you are taking that energy and you're projecting it onto your clients. Your mm -hmm. clients are walking away with the energy that you leave them with. So if your clients walk out and you were in a scattered space and you weren't really centered and you, you, you had no idea what was going on and you couldn't even collect your thoughts, they're going to walk out with that. Now, the, whether you want to believe this or not, they're going to actually go, I had a really interesting experience with my hairdresser today. I don't know what was going on for them. Mm -hmm. This was the statement. I don't know what was going on for them, but I'm feeling a little bit all over the shop or whatever. Yeah. It's the sense, the feeling that they've actually been left with by you. So this is another point of why it's so important to understand your energy because we are one of the only industries that's a touch industry that connects physically with people and energy is transferable, transferable, mm -hmm. superly. So if we want to step up and become the professionals, the holistic professionals that we're dreaming of, the mm -hmm. energy transference is a very important part of how we build this building block of becoming these holistic, aware stylists that are holding professional space for our clients with not just from what we're giving them, but from what we're actually sharing with them from an internal space within us. Exactly. And, and for myself, I'm fully trained in hair, aesthetics, massage, and holistic. So when you have that, transference is very real. And they have ways for us to, like, if you've been working not only as massage therapy, working your hands, it's also your arms, like that sort of thing, because you're you're connected with that person. But it's also good to know, you know, what type of hairstylist are you? What are what's the energy like when most of your clientele comes in? What is the energy when they leave? Mm. So what kind of impact have you made on them? Are you there and do you bring their um, energy up? Do you kind of keep their energy the same? Or are they so drained by the time they're done with you <laughs> that, you know, are they going to refer you again? And I think that's one thing people don't realize. They're like, um, yes, you can be the best stylist in the world, give the great haircut, great balayage, great color, great whatever. But energetically, that's something I think that's separate. They may say, yeah, great haircut, but they still may have a different feeling about them. If mm -hmm. they can walk in low energy and they come out leaving high energy or higher than they were coming in, even if it's a couple notches, it doesn't have to be extreme, but even just to feel better and that's why a lot of people come to us to feel better energetically. They may not say it, but just to come in for a blow dry, just to come in for something else, that's really what they're coming for. They're coming for the well-being and energetic part. They're not really coming for the service. It's never about the service. They're coming in to have their energy raised. That's really what they're coming in for. They're coming in for connection. Mm -hmm. You know, they're coming in for connection and connection takes energy. It takes energy. It takes an and energy as as like me being, you know, a um I, I call myself a little elder in this industry now because mm -hmm. I've been in it for ages. And energy is one of the highest commodities in my body. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't give my energy to anybody unless I feel it's a reciprocal give and take energetically mm -hmm. for me. And this yes. is like on a personal level now because my energy is valuable to me. And mm -hmm. this is like, this is, this is the transference that I want to share with people listening to this is like, yeah. how valuable is your energy to you? Mm -hmm. How, uh, at, at, at what price are you going to actually keep giving and giving and giving and giving from an empty cup energetically where you're actually depleted? Now we're actually talking about what happens on the mindless, energetic mindlessness mm -hmm. that goes on in our industry where we give and give and give and give and give and fill all our clients' cups to the point and to mm -hmm. the expense of our own energetic yes. depletion. So it's like knowing where your energy is at the beginning of the day, like what excess you have to share this is the boundary. This is I, I'm going to call this really strongly today. This is the mm -hmm. boundary 
This is my energy. This is, this is how I see it. This energy is for me, for my well-being, taking care of myself, you know, and you set mm-hmm. aside, as you set aside, I need this much energy to care for myself, mm-hmm. keep myself clear, to keep myself healthy and well. And this is the excess energy that I have to share with others. Mm-hmm. This is how I see it. And as you get on, you, you may have less and less and less energy to share and you might see less and less people. Mm-hmm. You might go, oh, I've only got energy to see one or two clients a day. So now we can actually add energetic worth to that. So if I'm only seeing one or two clients a day and my energy is here, mm-hmm. then what is that worth to me in actually, in actually sharing that energy with a client? And, and giving them complete, complete focus, complete presence mm-hmm. because I know that I've got this much energetic capacity to do yeah. so. So this is the balance. It's like giving away your energy for a $100 haircut per mm-hmm. hour or, or sharing your energy with one or two clients mm-hmm. at a energetic worth rate. Yes. Mm-hmm. Huge, di- huge different mindset of mm-hmm. shifting it from the consumer mindset to the yeah. holistic mindset. Mm-hmm. And it's probably one of those currencies people don't look at. Uh-huh. Like to me, energetic currency, I think it has value and, and that's what it is. But as I say, if you only do one or two, but they're getting 100%. Like when you're with them, they get 100%. And also too, I, I'd say like check how the clients feel better. But I think it also works energetically for yourself as well. That then that's where boundaries come in. Like if you know you always have the same client and for whatever reason, they may be the nicest person in the world, but you always feel energetically a- drained. You can't pinpoint it, but you all always feel energetically drained after. Um, I also did a, a podcast with Angie Atkinson. Um, it was the top 10 uh, emotional vampires, right? So, so uh, and how they drain you energetically. That was like one of the top rated. So a lot of, it must be a big subject for a lot of people (laughs) that that, that, that they want to, they, they want to know, but a lot of it, as I say, like energy is this thing that goes around. It's so big that we can't just cover in our short time, you know, on, on today's show, but really I do believe there's value in it. You know what I mean? It's, it, it has the power to create. It is a currency. It's an exchange. It's a, connection that can build or take away it's uh you know as i say and it's it's i think too we have to define also too what for ourselves what energy is Mm. so energy is it physical energy is it emotional energy is it you know like any of those things which it probably isn't it probably contributes to that but energy itself i believe it's all around you Mm. right energy is everywhere because you couldn't feel it if it wasn't there (laughs) <laughs> if you're attuned, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And it's like it's but it's understanding, it's the integration as well of knowing what physically what you know, what your energy, where your physical body is at, where your sensory body, like what it's what it's communicating to you, and then what your emotional body, what electrical mm-hmm. currents are actually moving through your body. So it actually generates what are you tapped into mm-hmm. in the external field as well? Because there's yes. many different types of energy experiences. And depending mm-hmm. on your internal state depends on the experience that you're going to have in the world for that day, for that moment, with that client, whatever the situation is, and what you're choosing, choosing being the operative word here, yes. what you're choosing to actually be involved in energetically with another person. So the currency of that, energetic currency, is the makeup of the physical body, of the sensory body, and of the community of, of the um, emotional body. And this is the currency that actually leads you to the energetic body because it's the integration of all of these three bodies that mm-hmm. actually become the energetic field in which people are responding to you with. Mm-hmm. People are responding to your energy. They're not responding to you. They're actually responding to your energy. Exactly. And I'm just going to shout somebody out. So Georgette is on. So, so Georgette, so I, so she liked, which is amazing because 
that's something I can see. And it's like, oh, people like us. So that's a great energetic. And I could go from, oh, it's a good show. And then all of a sudden, Georgette's like, like, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I feel now automatically somebody likes us. Let's like that raises the energy. Let's do some more. Right. But but it's so nice that people can get involved, be here, even if it's a like or hearting it up or whatever it might be or comment or suggestion or just being interactive. Hey, I feel that, too. This is what I feel about energy, you know, or whatever we're talking about on on the show that day. But it's so nice. And to say I love to shout out people that are are supporting us. Um, Then it shows, too, that. It also shows our algorithm for social media that what we have to say is important and people mm-hmm. want to listen, right? By by engagement, that's how the algorithms go is by engagement. So that's how their energy is. The more energetically you're engaged with your audience, the more the, the social media platform is going to promote you to others like you yeah. sort of thing. So thank you, Georgette. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I, I like it's 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 it's. Another person, like on a personal note, it's when I started actually creating Evolve, no one in the field was even whispering about holistic models. Mm-hmm. You know, when people used to ask me what I did 20 years ago, and I was actually a hair ther- I was doing hair therapy sessions back mm-hmm. then, no- people would go, what's a hair therapy session? Mm-hmm. What is that? And I'd have to go through the whole description of what a hair therapy session is. And because I kept on putting energy behind believing in what it was that I'm doing and why it is that I was doing it, because it resonated with me, I felt good in the energy of that exchange. It allowed for it to manifest and to actually Mm -hmm. become a thing where people started asking me for hair therapy sessions. Mm-hmm. And this is what I'm, I'm talking about the silence of energy and how it works so even though like a lot of hairdressers will be on this going oh yeah but how can I charge for that and yeah. I know like the whole mentality of how can I charge for that how can we put a price on that how can we actually recoup the the um, investment mm-hmm. on learning about energy on learning about it comes back a thousand fold because yes. what happens, from my experience, what happens is, is that that transference, that's at that currency, that transferred currency, energetic currency that you've deposited into people starts rippling into the greater community and the effects of that become wide and yes. the range becomes whole. So mm-hmm. it's not about... How can I actually recoup my investment? It's how can I actually touch people that touch people that touch people that all actually come back and ripple into my pool? Yes. And this is what we're talking about here. All this ripple effect, how you connect with people, how you touch people, how you communicate with people, how you feel people energetically, all of this ripples back into your pool into your pool and this is the return on investment i want to bring that in because money is a is energy as well yes money is energy and it's a currency it's an energy and it's like if you put in energy you will receive the reciprocal energy Mm -hmm. if you're not putting in the right energy you're not going to get the reciprocal energy back in the currency simple as that Mm -hmm. And energy has to flow because if it doesn't flow, it becomes stagnant. And that's the thing. You have to keep it moving or you're not like if same. If money is a currency, it's an energy. If you're not allowing that to flow and you're keeping it all for yourself, it's just building up stagnant. It's not, it should be there to help others. It should be there to encourage, like you were talking about therapy before, like, you know what I mean? But that's the biggest thing. I've known if you've seen this on social media, a lot of hairstylists have this post. I'm a therapist, but do they actually know what it means to be yeah. a therapist and do therapy? Right. So it's it's like and and learning on this show, I think this is giving you a good foundation of what a therapist is. Right. Well, there's a lot more to it to that. Yes. And I'm, 
I mean, I'm actually a qualified therapist. So there's there's a, a deepening of being able to drop really deeply into the therapy mm -hmm. part of working yeah. with a person on a psychological level. Because let's not let's not disregard the psychological elements yes. that we actually do and work with with our clients, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we're just not, you know, a lot of hairdressers are not qualified to hold that space, yet expected to hold that kind of space with their clients. Mm -hmm. And this is an energetic, this is also energetic, this is energetic pressure from yes. the clients when they're actually dumping on a stylist mm -hmm. and the stylist feels obliged to take on the energy of mm -hmm. the client. Yes. And what happens is they tune themselves out. They disassociate mm -hmm. so that they don't actually carry it. They don't realize it. And some people get as far as actually taking on a substance habit to actually self-medicate, to, to deal with the mm -hmm. amount of tuning out that they do energetically with their clients throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do that in a holistic model. No. At all, because you have this the, the skills and the knowledge to know how to actually have a deep conversation with a client and not take it on energetically. Yeah. You know how to set those boundaries. You know what's yours and what's not. You know when transference is occurring and when it's not. You know how to actually hold professional communication boundaries with others. Mm -hmm. and, and I always have a saying, I mean, are you, are you medicating or are you med meditating? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and yeah. I, and I do that during the day with, with certain people, certain like situations, I'm always meditating on it, you know what I mean? And, and allowing stuff to flow, to, to just keep moving to, is it going to be relevant? Is it relevant now in the moment? Will it be relevant in five years? Most stuff usually isn't. Yeah. So a lot of these things that we create, you know, are really, are really superficial, you know, yeah, just, absolutely. You know. they are. I agree so, with you. That. So, and that, and that's what people think like, oh, this is gonna, you know, um, ruin my entire life. It's one moment in time. Like if you're looking at the whole big picture, then again, but, but people always have stuff going on energetically all the time. And it's one uh, thing as hairdressers, we're always going to have to deal with, I think, but if you're in your authentic body all the time, it's much easier. And as I say, you've set your boundaries, you set your intentions, you, you know what I mean? Like that you're connecting with the people that you are uh, sir, like providing service for. So once you have all those elements, obviously you shouldn't have as many, erratic energy days like yes we're human and we're gonna have days where we're up here but then that's the ebb and flow where you need you can be high energy high energy but you also need that time of rest that's on the other side mm -hmm. so and you need that time of rest to be high energy and and you know so you have that time to refill and replenish your reservoir or you you have that thing if you need to be high energy, or say your salon is doing a cutathon, or your salon is doing a fashion show, or your salon is doing something that's high energy in the shop, and you need to be there 110 percent, regardless of how you feel, or if you're you're you know, it, it's just knowing that where can where can you draw that energy from? Is it already within you? How do I tap into it? Mm. And. And, and totally agreed. And like, I, mm -hmm. I also feel like giving uh, the listeners today a, an opportunity to sort of like, how do you replenish your energy in the middle of the day? You know, mm -hmm. these are like, we can talk about energy all we want, but like who, you, instead of actually going for that coffee, you know, to actually boost up, you know, and not real energy at all. It's actually superficial mm -hmm. and it peaks out and it lo lows and troughs with caffeine and substance and sugar and all sorts of things that actually mm -hmm. really are not low GI. The first thing that I want to actually bring into awareness is there's foods, there's low GI foods that actually sustain your energetic body and fuel to maintain the integrity of the way that you show up. And to keep yourself regulated because we're looking at the nervous system now, yeah, and how the nervous system deregulates or regulates your energetic body because it's all coming from this place. So, again, we get into this really deeply in Evolve and the reason why I do is because 
You need to have all the knowledge and the wisdom to understand how the systems work so that you become empowered and make the choices that suit you, that resonate mm -hmm. with you, that work with you. And there are, there are a multitude of choices to make depending on how your energy body is, how your nervous system functions and what your body needs to keep regulated. So there's food, there's making sure that you're hydrated. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that actually really helps your energetic body is taking energy breaks, leaving the salon, going outside. And I love this one. And a lot of people don't realize it because we use our hands all day with our clients. It's really important to clear the energy out of your hands. Really important. So a simple shake, go outside, simply shake the energy out of your hands and just give your, your hands a, a little moment of reprieve. And another thing is, is while you're walking, actually face your palms down to the earth and allow yourself to be refueled. And this is an energetic exercise that literally can happen in 10 to 20 seconds and you just just and breathe in and just breathe in and actually start absorbing and revitalizing your energy when you're feeling depleted instead of going for that coffee, go outside for five minutes and actually shake off the energy and refuel your body by just breathing in and absorbing energy from the earth. And I know this sounds it might sound a little bit, you know, spiritual and it is you know it is because there's there's a spirit that's actually intact with us we are a spiritual being and i don't want to i don't want to take that away i want to bring that in to the mm -hmm. whole picture and it's a part of our reflection and the importance of maintaining the balance of body mind and spirit and it, they, we say body mind and spirit because these are the major elements mm -hmm. of energetic balance within us Exactly. And before we kind of jump into uh, our soulful section. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and with food, you always want fresh, live food. So live is like a living fruits and vegetables, not yeah. say live as it's alive. But you want to make sure that if you have stuff, it has seeds in it. That it's not genetically modified. Um, as we say, with hydrating spring water, um, not necessarily tap water or um, like just just um, filtered filtered bottled water. You have to be very careful what you're kind of putting in there as well because that really helps you energetically. If you're already having a coffee to get your energy up before you come in, now you have a drop about 3 p.m. You grab a chocolate bar that's been in the back of your drawer. So those are great instant energy things. But as I say, they're, like you said, they're artificial energy. You're mm -hmm. up, but then you're back down again. There's no sustained, there's no sustained energy. And you actually crash harder at the end of the day because you're mm -hmm. so exhausted because mm -hmm. now that coffee that pumped you up also dehydrated you. That mm -hmm. sugar that pumped you up, now your body has to deal with all the sugar overload. So mm -hmm. it's working over time. That's mm -hmm. also taking your body, the toll on your body as well. And energetically, because how can you feel like great? And then you, because people know that. You, you, you're feeling great and then all of a sudden you eat something and then you're not feeling as great mm. for whatever reason, energetically, right? So what happened from that time before you had it to the time after? So it's some kind of change that's happening energetically within your body or you're taking on the energy of that food, mm. right? Which is usually a false energy. So that fake energy that you're applying to an authentic energy. So it's like a plus and a minus, Right. So basically a plus and a minus don't really, you know, no. you're, you're good. You're going to go somewhere, you know, it, like it still merges, but you're going to go somewhere and usually yeah. it'll tend to deplete you sort of thing. So when you're talking about body, mind, spirit, so did you want to kind of go into the soul a little bit? Um, I, I, I will go into the soul, but I just want to go back onto this, you know, uh, the foods that we eat and the importance of it just one last time. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to touch on that. And what I notice is because we're energetic creatures by nature, we have a very energetic job. Hairdressing and a service industry is a very energetic job. And mm -hmm. I find that having a big meal, you know, in the middle of your day is usually actually not the best thing to do for a high energy job. Mm -hmm. And what I sort of suggest is having small 
small meals right throughout the day, which actually keep your energy regulated, keep mm-hmm. you actually fueled. Like, you know, if you need a bit of sugar, it's fine. Have some dates, you know, have something that's natural, like some dates and some nuts. Have like a date and nut mix that's actually set up in a bowl, even on mm-hmm. on a table in the middle of the salon where clients can actually serve themselves and help themselves as well. Mm-hmm. And you have this kitchen, you know, with fruits and you have all sorts of beautiful natural foods that are also energetically reflective of the kind of environment that you are firstly upholding for yourself and secondly that you are actually suggesting for your clients because energetically that transference of health and well-being is going to be transferred onto them and to you so if you you are you know you are what you eat we said this a couple Mm -hmm. of months ago yeah? yeah so you are what you eat and if we're being energetically authentic, mm-hmm. then we need to be energetically authentic with what we're actually consuming as well in terms of the output that actually gets communicated, no, not communicated, wrong word, that actually gets received by our clients and our mm-hmm. team. Yes. So if we're smoking away and drinking coffee and all the rest of it and then we're putting on this holistic face, mm-hmm. Guys, not going to work. Energetically no. incongruent. The client's going to mm-hmm. feel it. You're, you're, you know, you're totally, you're lying. You're lying to yourself, <laughs> and, and yeah. lying to your team, and yeah. you're going to pick up on that energetically. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And and funny thing is, I just grabbed some dates before we did the show. I went out. I purchased some some medjool dates, and <laughs> but yes. because it's a, it's a great. Um, pick me up. It's also a great sweetener because I don't use sugar or artificial sweeteners, which is another thing you should stay away from. Mm, like, no sugars, no refined sugars, no any carbohydrates, honey, anything processed. Yeah. yeah, no processed foods. I know, no, I know ha- and honey never it. expires. <laughs> honey, <laughs> honey, <laughs> you know, I think they just found honey from like Egypt from like I don't know, 6,000 years ago, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, and it was honey, so good. <laughs> it's it it doesn't it never expires. It's yeah. a natural medicine. So like honey, if you need if you need some sort of fuel, like put some honey in a tea or something mm-hmm. like that, like a teaspoon of honey. That's fine to, if you need that. It, there's nothing wrong with having a fruit or some mm-hmm. honey or a date or any of those things. What we're talking about is the refined sugars that peak you and drop you very quickly. Mm-hmm. And this is what's not sustainable for the well-being and the longevity and the sustainability of your of your career for the long term. And it will burn you out. It will cause other mm-hmm. effects down the road. So I just wanted to touch on that again. Yeah. If yeah. And as I say, yeah. like for me, one quick one before you go, because you always like more stuff comes. But if you yeah. also think, and this is why they have what's your relationship with food? So if you believe, so if you treat those foods like a relationship, do you want them to pick you up and drop you later? (laughs) Do you want, you know, you want something sustainable that's ongoing that, you know, you're, you're going to grow together. You're going to, it's going to help your mindset. It's going to help you be energetic. You don't want something that's going to drain you. So when you think of food in that kind of way, because fat free is never fat free. (laughs) <laughs> but we're not we're not going there on this podcast, but <laughs> you know, or, or like it's that not, sort of thing. But it really not. makes a big difference. And and basically that's what it is. It's about the connection, it's about relationships, it's about this with yourself, with the source, with your clients, with your uh colleagues, with your but it also works that way too. Because if you eat a certain food that you're grumpy, makes you grumpy, that's going to affect the people around you. That's going to affect your client because now you ate something you shouldn't or drank something you shouldn't. Now you're getting the after effects of it. And now somebody is getting maybe some unnecessary energy from that. When, when, as I say, you could have, as I say, have your boundaries or it's all, it's always about choices. We always have choices, even though we think we don't have any, we always had them, you know, even when we think there's none there. Well, food affects moods. It, mm-hmm. it, it, it's a total, it's a total relationship between your food and your mm-hmm. moods. So if yep. you've actually shifted your mood through the day, 
Mm-hmm. Always check on what it is that you ate. Just check yeah. on what it is that you ate. If you and and that will be the indicator of why your moods changed. Mm-hmm. It's usually what you've eaten, yeah. and and maybe what you've picked up from a client is the other one. There's two two things to check in. Mm-hmm. What was the client that you last saw? What state was that client in? So what transference occurred? And what did I eat? Exactly. And that's why we talk about journaling. That's why we talk about having a diary. Put all that in there because yeah. then that can really show you what's happening. Or like I had a couple of mandarins. I had this. I had that. Then how did you feel before, during, and after? And then you can really start to pinpoint, which which I've done. And that's how I, I did for myself to seeing what triggers me, what works well, what's, you know, and say, and then it's fine. Like what seeds, nuts, fruits, vegetables, junk food, you know what I mean? I'm not 100% perfect food wise, but we're all human too, where there's something you crave. But then again, if you can have it, enjoy it, not feel guilty about it and then move on. That that that's fine, right? It's so, not about becoming this, you know. No. Deep, uh, what are they called? Yogi. Exactly. Like, on a mountain top, you know. Yep. Even though I know that I dream about that, and I mm-hmm. probably spend most of my life in that state anyway. But mm-hmm. like, it's not about becoming this strict yogi. We're in a we're in the fashion industry. We exactly. are being realistic. We're in the fashion industry. We're in a high energy industry as well and it's like it's it's a choice guys you can choose what kind of energy you want to be in and how to meet it by mm-hmm. understanding how your body responds yes to your moods to your feelings to your emotions to your body ailments you know if you've got a tight shoulder or your legs mm-hmm. sore your hips out these this actually affects your moods and your feelings for the day and mm-hmm. your energy for the day because it's consuming energy so just like being aware of all these little things is the holistic model it is the mm-hmm. holistic model it is the sustainable long term holistic yes. way of looking at what we're doing we are humans working with other humans mm-hmm. and story yeah and let's say and if we're standing all day 14 hours a day 12 hours a day hopefully a lot of you aren't still doing that but because that takes its toll and we talked about this on the physical body in the very first one but really about those relationships yeah if your body has to work hard all the time to process these things i find i have actually more energy when i eat less because my yeah. body isn't using all that energy to break down food and to do all that kind of stuff. And we don't need as much food as what we think. Unfortunately, especially in uh, certain areas like the U.S., the portions are massive, more so than what we ever need. You know what I mean? You could probably get half of that order and it would do you a couple of meals, right? Mm-hmm. But, because, but, but then again, it's part of their industry to release some of those feel good which is sugar salt fats <laughs> to make everything feel good and that's releasing so that's what they're doing in their business but we're also releasing the same thing too but energetically and with all the other things we we provide so yeah we've all, almost been like uh, 90 minutes so <laughs> we're about 80 minutes now so as we're kind of wrapping up is there anything you want to touch on mariana before we kind of conclude uh this part um, I just want to. I just want to say, this work, guys. It requires you to drop the mask. It it really requires you to check in with what is real for you. It is, and the reason why I'm sort of like winding up with this is because this is the last time we're going to be really talking about your personal self, your mm-hmm. personal well being. Um, over these next next podcasts because the next one we're actually jumping on we're jumping in the psychology of hairdressing so we're actually jumping into theory now we're really jumping in and looking at what is behind psychologically behind the industry that we're in so this is the last this is the last little piece that we're sharing here about the importance of looking at self first the importance of understanding yourself first and how confrontational that is and being very aware of the confrontation of taking a look at your ego, taking a look at what is really showing up, taking a look at what is going on there 
that isn't authentic and isn't real. And hence why I always suggest in every podcast, get a journal, get a journal, um, get a therapist if you need to, or actually reach out to me as well, because I actually do amazing um, mentoring on these four bodies and help align them for you in four sessions. So there's that too. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, it's just like really stripping back the layers and this is why we're having these conversations, to be holistic, to be authentic, to be in an industry where it's sustainable and loving and nurturing towards you is about us stripping back what's not real anymore and therefore actually inviting your clients into an environment that is allowing them to be real with you and mm alleviate burnout and that's like this is the holistic model is alleviating alleviating burnout letting mm -hmm. go of what doesn't work anymore and stepping into a freshness and a freedom and relief I can only just say to you this is the most relieving thing that I ever did when I stepped out of commercial hairdressing and you can still be in commercial hairdressing but choose to opt for a holistic model in a commercial environment mm -hmm. it's still acceptable and the awareness around having holistic models in salons now is becoming more and more and more acceptable and it depends on the depth of which you want to take this holistic model into but with evolve i go deep i go deep mm -hmm. and i go in and we unpack it all really because it's important you're important you're important Exactly. And that's a wonderful way to wrap up today's session on the energetic body. And that's a big thing. People energetically, I think, are just burnt out. You know, they're just burnt out unnecessarily because they don't have the tools. They don't know the steps. They don't, you know, have boundaries or they don't enforce their boundaries. Um, there, there's so much in there. Obviously, we have 12 parts to go over a lot of stuff. I really encourage, like, like Mariana says, get a journal get a diary, get somewhere to make your notes, whatever, be raw, be real as much as you can. And then, and then they're for your eyes only anyway, but really see how things are affecting you, whether your thoughts are affecting you energetically, whether your foods are affecting you um, with not only your energetic body, but also your physical body and your emotional body. Sometimes sensory because the smell of an orange or the like that kind of thing too can also release other things as well. Um, a grapefruit or, or something that maybe isn't as pleasant, it, it, you know, it'll evoke things in you. But, but this is the whole point of this series that you get benefit, that you have tools that you can use, that you can implement right away and be self-aware and be able to take your mask down or completely off to be in your authentic self in that moment, um, mindful and present. Um, and also, you know, that, that as we go, so we started with the body next, we're going to the next level, the psychology. So it's not enough to just kind of know, but, but also do the work, be here, do the work. Cause we'd love to hear feedback as well and say, Hey, I saw this podcast and it was number this one. And I, I tried those ideas while wow, it changed my life. Right. Yeah. Or it made it different or it allowed me to give me more self-confidence so I could take the next steps, which I yeah. couldn't before. Or I was wondering why I was always crashing. Now I know why, Hey, I'm 60 days caffeine free, <laughs> whatever it might be you know, like, like that kind of, that kind of thing. And as always, uh, the show, I want to say thank you for watching. If you have any questions on today's episode or would like to be a guest, um, or have a show idea, who knows, or maybe you want Mary and Iana to do something else, who knows, but, but we'll see after we get to number 12. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, because obviously, too, we don't want to overwhelm. We want to encourage and empower uh, sort of thing. But you can always email at Hairstylist Empowerment Podcast at Outlook.com. You also want to make sure that you follow on Facebook, um, Facebook Hairstylist Empowerment Podcast, where you can watch the show weekly. You can put in your name. You can uh, make comments. You can like, do all that kind of stuff. You can also follow me on IG as well. Um, we also have uh, these coming up, which we'll put in again. So you can um, 
So Mary Anna, so is Head Ed, which is your page on Facebook, um, Evolve. So it's head head.ed.evolve on IG. But mm -hmm. and then and then we'll we'll flip this off and then you have the website written there as well. If you want to follow me, it's it's Brad Celebrity Hairstylist and Beauty Industry Cruises as well. We'll pop that off. So Mariana, she's the founder of head.ed and it's www.headed.com. Uh, dot com dot au because she is in Australia. <laughs> um, down under, down under the wonder I, down under. <laughs> yeah. So so today's episode again has been brought to you by Beauty and Sue Cruises, powerful education and beautiful destinations, which is what we're going to do. So October we have the Caribbean one come up. So uh, with this one, we're actually combining it. We're doing a holistic retreat. Um, at sea, but also with, with Mona Leung, who's the um, producer and main uh, star of Beyond Vanity, the movie which we just had a live presentation last week uh, in the Beauty Industry Cruises group. And Jake, who, Jake Putin, who's been a, or Putin, <laughs> um, I'm French, so I, I tend to flare it up a little bit, but who's done incredible stuff. He's also worked with Marianne before. Uh, Mariana before um, and he has some excellent skills for people to learn and it's kind of an extension of what we're doing now um, it's also Halloween because it goes October 27th to November 1st where they're going to do a, a scarlet night they're going to do a fright night they're going to do it's also a full moon so Mariana or so um, Mona is interested in doing a full moon ceremony there's so there's lots going on and then comes january which will be down under so again yeah. january 27th to uh february 1st 2024 there's lots of great deals going on lots of free bar tabs and discounts um that are available until the end of this month on the 28th 29th prices go up so you kind of have to book at least get your deposit down before that um and then uh june we're going to go the mediterranean we're going to it's all about hair loss and all that kind of stuff with, with Missy uh, Bender Peterson uh, with Malibu uh, C and she'll be doing certification and all that kind of stuff. So basically the way it works, the days are on land, you're free to explore, connect with nature, take your shoes off, ground in the earth, touch a tree, talk to a tree. They can listen. Um, <laughs> plants, plants are uh, sentient. I believe beings that they can, they can, uh, you know, understand and hear and listen and respond. You may not hear a voice, but they're with us present in the moment. Um, and that is happening June 2nd to June 9th, 2024. Uh, again, you can go to www.beautyindustrycruises.com and uh, on, on IG at Beauty Industry Cruises. And Mariana, again, go to um, at head.ed.evolve is hers on IG and be sure to check out her website. Plus you also have a pre program, I believe happening now. Um, we, um, the lead up to evolve, which is 2024, because it's a 12 month course with us. There is a pre program that actually starts for the whole of January, which is self reflective work. And it, it actually sets the, the pace and the foundations before you go into evolve. But where, Currently at the moment, what I'm actually offering is actually I'm offering um, anybody that's interested in Evolve to do four sessions with me, mentoring sessions mm -hmm. that actually cover the, the physical body, the sensory body, the emotional body and the energetic body. And I get you online. I support you to get online with all of those bodies and integrate it. So it's a really beautiful little special that I've actually just put out just for the end of the year, preparing for Evolve. So if anybody's interested in actually getting online with me, reach out to me at www.headed.com.au and follow the threads and the links. Or you can go to my IG account and actually just click on the link tree and you can go straight to the website from there. And um, book your four sessions, your blueprint four sessions mm -hmm. with and pre-lead but yes excited about yeah next week. Next yeah week. i would yeah i would definitely have them you know sign up get your four and then yes. because that's happening all january and then see marianne and i live <laughs> you know leaving yes. from melbourne 
on, on Virgin Voyages. Um, so we leave from Melbourne. We also go to um, Hobart. And we do an overnight there as well. So it's, it's, it's kind of great. So as I say, the days are on land. You're free to explore, test out your new skills, meet some new friends, reinvent yourself, whatever may happen. But then you also get us now from seeing us online, see us live in yeah. person. We are real people. And, and we'll be, as I say, in, in Australia, January 27th to 29th. Um, we are celebrating some post post birthdays so you know cards and gifts are accepted <laughs> <laughs> actually yeah, we're in the same month <laughs> it is we're, we're we're really close so as i say it'd be nice to kind of celebrate with the people that have kind of been with us all along or if your friends and family want to come uh this is adults only so you have to be 18 plus but the the trip and the experience itself and that's really what it is is what you do with your clients too it's that journey that you take and that's kind of what we'll be doing on the on the cruise as well. Yeah. Amazing. 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 So, next week, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna quickly just say sure next, can. Week, yeah. next week, psychology of hairdressing, guys. Now, this yeah. is this is the beginning. This is the beginning of a whole new chapter. And this is like the change agent chapter in Evolve. And this is four modules that we're moving through. That I'm going to take you through on a bit of a journey now behind the scenes of our industry and what's really going on psychologically with what it is that we're doing now and what we're involved in in our business that we're in. So this is we're taking it. It's a different gear, different gear, <laughs> different personal, which I love. But now we're yeah. getting into the the guts of what it is that hairdressing is really all about. Yeah, and energy and energetically, I love that. And as I say, I'm all about psychology. I'm all about the inner workings. You know, why do people do what they do? Why do we, you know, there's just so much to unpack there too. And if we don't stop, we'll never get off. Like, you know what I mean? So we, we, we appreciate your time. We honor your time. So I want to say thank you, everybody, for joining. Remember to, to uh, get up, dress up, show up you know, wonderfully and powerfully, and we'll see everybody next time.